And that, of course, means that our first place, our first place winner of the first ever BSV Hackathon, walking home with a whopping 250 BSV coins, Uptime SV. Woohoo! Congratulations! One of the big announcements at CoinGeek's recent conference in Toronto was the winner of the CoinGeek Hackathon. It was a competition to create projects to encourage people to start using Bitcoin SV. The winner was a project called Uptime SV, made by a team in Australia. Their idea is to pay people small sums in BSV to let Uptime use their laptops or mobiles to run tests on IP addresses and websites for paying clients. The leader of the Uptime team, all of whom went to Toronto for the conference, is Brent Bevier. When he was safely back home, I spoke to him to find out about his project and the ideas behind it. You're listening to CoinGeek Conversations with Charles Miller. Brent, many congratulations on winning the CoinGeek Hackathon. Thank you very much. Um, and in anticipation of that, because you were one of the um, one of the finalists, you went to Toronto hoping to win. Did you think you had a good chance? Uh, I, I think maybe my um, teammates had a little more confidence in themselves than I did, but I was certainly quite shocked about it because uh, <laughs> shocked um, in a good way. I hope. Yes, of course, shocked in a good way. I, you know, um, I was here in, in Sydney, and um, we had done the hackathon the 48 hour hackathon and it, you know, we're in a bit of a precarious time zone, I think, but, um, we powered through it and we got a, we got a, um, mostly workable submission and, um, we sort of sat in anticipation of the results and we figured out, we found out rather that we placed in the top 14, which, uh, I was quite surprised by it, but my other, my, my other teammates were like, Oh, sweet. This is awesome. So, <laughs> I thought, well, we'll see where we go from here. And then uh, I was sitting at my desk uh, at work and uh, got the email and we been placed in the top three. And I was like, holy crap, I need to get a passport. Because <laughs> <laughs> you are based where then? I'm based in Sydney, but my um, my other teammates are based in the central west of New South Wales, as well as um, the central coast, just north of Sydney. Right. So let's just go back a stage. Before you got involved in this, what's your sort of day job? Or do you have one? Uh, I, I'm doing an honors degree um, in medical research, basically. I'm doing um, long-read DNA sequencing and HIV. Um, my other um, teammates, well, one works in IT, and one's sort of like a programmer and does a bunch of stuff from rocket stuff to uh, uh, um, programming, freelance coding, yeah. So it sounds like the subject of your application to, to do with computer security was really outside of your professional work then? Uh, yes and no. I think, well, I think my other two teammates are uh, quite strong in the uh, IT and programming fields, and that's something I kind of uh, left behind once I went to the university and started studying. Um, I, I've been programming since I was probably about 10 years old, and I'm still not that great, but... Uh, <laughs> It, it, it's not something that's unfamiliar to me entirely, but uh, it's certainly something I had some experience with, and I obviously have my friends, and we uh, made a go of it. Were you already interested in Bitcoin and Bitcoin SV, or how did it all come about? Well, I think I uh, sort of started closely following what was going on probably about 2015, 2016, and I started to dive in, and then I read everything I could about Bitcoin and how Bitcoin works, and then I looked at a bunch of the other altcoins, and eventually I meandered over to um, Bitcoin SV. So how did you get from your sort of general interest to thinking, oh, well, I, I think I can get involved in this? Did you already know your teammates, your colleagues? Um, yes, you yes, yes, yes. We, we, I, I um, went to cool basically of one of the other teammates as a kid and uh, I met the other one several years ago so we've, we've known each other quite well for some time. So had you ever worked together on something like this? Um, no I'd say it's uh, actually quite a um, novel venture. <laughs> and so how did you... 
I, did, did you did you approach the hackathon by thinking now let's see what we can do uh, and sort of have a list of possible ideas or did you have this one idea and think oh the hackathon is going to be the perfect vehicle for it yeah so i think um we did actually have a sort of short list of ideas that we could uh, approach the hackathon with but um, it was entirely dependent on what the um, theme of the hackathon was going to be we weren't sure what it was going to be uh, originally we were looking at some sort of way of um signing uh, documents and, and, and legal contracts but we figured that that's probably not something that quite lends itself towards uh, onboarding lots of you right because the theme was the theme of the hackathon was announced as being helping onboarding you moved yeah so what so, so how does your uh, the idea that you came up with sort of relate to onboarding so we wanted to give people basically a way of completing jobs to earn Bitcoin SV because I think that's the most significant way that you can actually get a lot of people interested and in, in a lot of people actually uh, earning some money and being able to actually do things, particularly as it relates to um, MetaNet and going forward. And you've got things like Bitstagram, like if you could just earn a little bit of money in the background on your phone or your or in your laptop, and you could actually use it for useful things. So exactly. we so thought now that's I've, probably useful. I've actually been on your um, uh, website yeah, and I'm slightly. That's a, that, that's a judgment demo, so <laughs> we hopefully have a, I haven't off put you. Well, no, I learned something, but I also gained a certain amount of confusion from it because mm -hmm. I paid my. I, I, so I on the website. Yeah. Well, well, just I'll tell you what, so that I don't completely mess it up. Just explain mm -hmm. for people who haven't visited the website what it is that you're invited to do when you when you go there. So once you hit the uh, home page of the website, you'll uh, it has a dialogue, uh, a text box where you can put in an IP address or a, a website domain like google.com or a string of numbers. You can hit scan and then it'll prompt you with a sort of list of the different uh, uh, mechanisms by which you could query a server to determine its uptime status, how, how uh, quickly it uh, loads. Um, whether or not the DNS is propagated, because when it comes to uh, um, old school domains, I suppose you would call them in the MetaNet era, um, you have to wait for the DNS caches to update to a new IP address if you're uh, configuring a new server. And this is quite tiresome for people who are trying to understand where, uh, where their uh, website is visible in the world. But um, yeah, we give these people the options and then we want to you know, configure it to what regions they want to scan it in. Uh, what what functions they want, and then ultimately the volume um, of tests you can do. So you can have a very small number of users give you data, or you could, if you're particularly interested in a wide distribution of um, data, where you could understand where uh, efficiencies may be dropping in the world. You could use a, a lot of users to figure out, especially when it comes to uh, denial of service attacks, which is something that we're quite focused on, on helping um, administrators diagnose. Okay, so actually, uh, yeah, so I went through all that, and funnily enough, um, in my lack of originality, I chose google.com. <laughs> 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 I ticked the boxes, and I paid my six pence UK yeah. um, on Money Button, but then, I, I hate to say it, but I, nothing seemed no, to happen. No, no. Yes, this is correct. Uh, we're, we're currently work, uh, waiting with uh, Ryan X Charles, or we're actually going to expand our expand our payment integration. But um, as it stands, the money button actually doesn't uh, give a, a well. We don't have a callback which will redirect your uh, web browser to the results. The res the 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 actual data, what you've requested, will pr propagate to the BSV blockchain. Our app can read that data and act on it, and can send it back. But uh, the two are not connected yet. <laughs> right. 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 So the answer I've paid for exists. It's just that I can't see it. <laughs> yes. Yes. Correct. Um, okay. Well. So yeah. Well, I mean, as I said, it was it was a judgment demo, and I, it, it, ostensibly all this, the, the entire skeleton of the thing is ready there to go. But we're really looking to expand it out now that we've got past. You know, we had forty eight hours to build something. Yeah. That, sure. It looked uh, tenable, but yeah. Well, so now again, I mean, this is an incredibly ignorant thing, but um, oh, explain sure. to me. I see the bit about you can um, earn some Bitcoin mm -hmm. SV 
by mm -hmm. uh, allowing your uh, computer to be used. Mm -hmm. But the, the thing that I experienced was the other end of the thing, which is the service that some of the cu yeah. that customers are paying for. Is that right? That's right. So, so we're, we're going to look at making an, uh, finishing an Android app and then doing Windows and Mac and all the different clients that people would like to use. Um, so if I want to go into the other end of your business model as a, mm -hmm. um, a sort of worker who's being paid for yes. their services, can you just explain what that consists of? Yeah, so you're, you download an app basically and you, uh, depending on your payment integration, uh, you'll either log in with Handcash or, or, or Relay or uh, or even have just a plain Bitcoin SV wallet. Um, then uh, the server or the blockchain, depending on how we do this, I think we'll probably maybe query the blockchain directly or maybe have a specialized service which cuts out a lot of the fluff. But either way, um, what will happen is the users will get new requests um, that people have paid for, like you did with the money button. Uh, it'll show up on their phone and they say, here's the IP address, here's what they want. Um, you'll go and do that for them and then send back the data to us and we'll pay you a little bit of money for it, basically. Right, so why do you need me to do that rather than you doing that for the person who's paid? Yeah, that's a good question. So um, basically, the problem, there are services similar to what we have, uh, what we've done with this, but... Uh, problem um, authentically I suppose is they're centralized on basically uh, Amazon servers or, or whatever the, the typical internet, internet infrastructure is um, so if you ever go to a website like is this up or down I think or um, there's one we compared in the presentation called hyperping um, these are these are servers that are in uh, quite well kitted out um, server farms and they're not going to be representative of someone like me in, in rural Australia or, or somewhere in, in North England, for example, or even in maybe Vietnam. Or You want to see what the experience is like for different people with different exactly. devices and things. Exactly. Yeah, uh, devices is another thing. Exactly. Mobile devices have their own um, nuances when it comes to connections. But so if I, as the paying customer, request this information... Will it be gleaned from you know many many um, people on the other end of your system who yes. are querying on its behalf? Yeah, so we want to be able to configure the volume between like you know something as low as like ten users versus maybe uh, thousands or hundreds of thousands or tens of thousands. Um, this is something we want to um, do. So um, the, the, the paying customer can sort of mm -hmm. choose the extent of the exactly. survey they're going to pay for. That's right, yep. Is this a business model you came up with, or did it exist in other forms already? <clears throat> uh, well, actually, the business models that exist currently, uh, one we, the one we covered in the um, presentation, that Dean covered in the presentation, um, was a service called HyperThing, and I think they've got, uh, they've got a limited number of countries, and um, you pay on a subscription model, say monthly, and they give you a, uh, basically a limited number of tests and a limited number of countries. And again, the tests you're paying for are coming from um, instances, instances in server farms, which aren't obviously going to be representative of your end users. So <clears throat> the idea of doing it as a micropayment service, especially uh, something in a sort of distributed fashion where people are just earning it, um, that hasn't been done before, and indeed, you couldn't do it with something like PayPal because the fees would be just um, quite absurd. So, if I'm if I am one of the people providing the service to you, mm -hmm. will I have to acknowledge every time it happens, or will it just happen every time I've got my laptop or phone switched on? It should. Uh, what we what we will be aiming for is to uh, just have it run in the background and completely out of your hair. Um, that's great. So money, I, ju I money always, just arrives. Always, money just yes, arrives exactly. without me having to do anything. It sounds ideal. It, and drain your battery, maybe a little bit. But uh, I have, yeah, a, I have a funny quite, feeling yeah. that the uh, the figures involved may not be uh, life changing mm -hmm. for me. Well, it's possible. I mean, it really, again, if anything, it depends on the volume of users that we end up getting, and I hope we want to get like a, a viable product out there that we can sort of gauge what the community interest is. And we've had a fair few expressions of interest 
um, in in having the service. Um, I suppose. So. I mean, your challenge is that you've got to get people who want to pay for the service, um, but mm-hmm. they're only going to want to pay if you've got a nice. Uh, large collection of people offering to provide the information and then the people you can't get the people wanting to offer the information until there's a kind of throughput of money coming in their direction for doing so I suppose the the ratio of the people uh, of people that are really want to participate in it I think is probably a a, a good uh, 10 or 10 or more times higher than the the people who are server administrators out there so I think this is a problem that'll Right. Ultimately, so it's easier itself. to get people to sign up for something where they get paid than. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> well, it's also something we obviously want to have something elastic to price, similar to like Uber in in, uh, in demand. Obviously, a region of the world and countries as a world that have a low user base, um, for their results are hmm. are going to be more valuable. So like if you're the one uptime SV user in um, North Korea or, or West Africa or something, and that data is really, really desired, then, then the price should uh, reflect that eventually, I would. So if you're providing a service that nobody else is offering, then you'll yeah. be better paid for it. <laughs> yes, well, uh, you could imagine that the fees are going to be quite competitive in, in Australia or the United States or Europe, where you've got a lot of users who want to provide their data, but mm. an equilibrium will but I mean, this is a this yeah. is a terrific thing for onboarding mm. people for because it specifically favours places which mm. where it's un- exactly. un- where it doesn't exist much in, in at the moment. Exactly. Yeah. And so, and we think possibly that uh, there's a quite a benefit for these things, particularly in um, I think we've seen like in the Arab Spring in Egypt, um, when there is an outage. I mean, you really want to know about um, things, particularly of political concern. I think you know. Stuff like that is really important and really valuable in terms of data. Mm-hmm. And just from the point of view of the people paying for the service, just mm-hmm. give me a bit more of an idea of who they might be and why they might want this information. So I think uh, most people that run a, run a server of their own are fairly technically um, capable. So uh, the people that run their own servers, people that run... Uh, content distribution networks that, that share data, um, people that are interested in, in, in monitoring outages just as a, I suppose, as a hobby, but it, even when it comes to the realm of um, you know, political strife, I think that's also important. Um, any, any time that there's something of significance, I think there's probably going to be an uptick in demand for these services. Right. So how has the winning of the hackathon uh, sort of helped or changed your plans to de- develop it? Well, I mean, it's quite a surprise. I, I think we're going to push on. I think we're obviously going to resolve what, what you've talked about with the money button. Um, um, I want my 6P quite... back. <laughs> I, can, I can send it back. I can send it back <laughs> if you like. But, uh, um, yeah, I think um, uh, basically we want to, we want to roll out a, a product that people can download to their phone and, and actually, you know, redirects the website correctly and then we'll actually gauge what the the user interest is and add features where people uh, request them. I think we've had a lot of um, people that talk about, could you do this? Could you do that? What about mm-hmm. this? What about that? We've been quite perceptive to that and um, I guess we'll take it one step at a time. Will you be able to devote more time or more resources to the project as a result of winning? That's certainly a motivation to absolutely. I think uh, I, I'm managing what I'm doing with full time yeah. uh, honors, but uh, the other guys are very keen to keep pursuing the project. Absolutely. Um, and when did you have a good time in Toronto? And was it sort of good to meet other people in the same with the same interest? Yes, I, it's a, it's the first time that I've actually met a crowd of DSV supporters. Frankly, <laughs> <laughs> what did you make of them? <laughs> Ah, they were fantastic people. I, I, you couldn't um, ask for a lovelier crowd. Everyone was quite um, cordial, and it was wonderful to. It was my first time out of Australia, frankly, so I wasn't quite sure what to expect. And I think twenty hours on a on a, a plane to Toronto, it was quite uh, delightful to talk to people that had uh, you know similar opinions on, on, on things in the cryptocurrency space, which we all know was quite um, contentious at times. Yeah, I mean, I, I don't imagine that Toronto would be a, a major kind of culture shock after Sydney. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I, I will say that people are more polite and uh, 
it's a it's a bit like Melbourne, I find, but uh, the streets are definitely wider, and it's it's got a bit of that American aesthetic as well. Yeah, yeah. But, it's uh, used in all the American movies to to represent um, <laughs> state uh, cities in the United States, apparently. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah, I, I, I've heard about that. Did you manage to go <laughs> to uh, Niagara Falls or anything like that? Yeah, we. That's something that was on our bucket list, but we didn't get around to it. I think the first. Uh, I think we got there on Monday, and um, we're all quite tired. Um, but eventually, we actually got to go have a couple of drinks with the people from N Chain. So we were especially tired after that. And we <laughs> basically crashed. And um, the up one other day that we had free um, was the day after the after party. So, so that was a write off. Yeah, there were, yeah. Uh, all our free time was a write off. <laughs> <laughs> well, great. Well, um, thank you so much for talking to me and uh, really good luck with the project. And Please keep, me, keep us posted as to um, how it goes. You're more than welcome to send me your uh, pay, uh, uh, your uh, uh, money button ID. I no, no, I'd like, to, I'd like to contribute that to the future of the project. <laughs> <laughs> We've had a couple of people say that. It's very, very, very kind. <laughs> lovely speaking to you. Thanks so much. Thank you. Have a lovely day. Thanks. Bye now. Well, congratulations again to Brent and the Uptime team. Thanks for listening to CoinGeek Conversations and please give us some stars on Apple Podcasts if you don't mind as it helps other people find us. Have a good week and bye for now. <laughs>